Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. In addition to the great detectives of old time radio, check out the other podcast, including Public Domain Video Theater, which every couple weeks we bring you a public domain television show or movie. Right now we are going back and forth between episodes of Dragnet and Boston Blackie. Then uh, there's the amazing world of radio in which we are going right now through our summer series brought to you by our Patreon supporters in which we're looking at a great movie adapted to radio. This week it's all about Eve and you can uh, take a listen over at amazing.greatdetectives.net. And then check out my Classy Comics podcast at classycomicsguy.com. We're on a search for the classiest comics in the universe, focusing on great classic comics as well as uh, modern comics that are worth a read. Check it out, ClassyComicsGuy.com. Now it's time for today's episode of Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons, the original air date, June the 9th of 1949. And this one is the case of murder and the star of death. It's time now for Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons. Ladies and gentlemen, Anison and Kalinos present Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons, one of the most famous characters of American fiction in one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight and every Thursday at the same time, the famous old investigator takes from his file and brings to us one of his most celebrated missing persons cases. Tonight's case is entitled, The Case of Murder and the Star of Death. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, it contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients. That's why Anison gives such incredibly fast, effective relief from headache, neuritis, or neuralgia pain. Many people have been introduced to Anison tablets by their own physicians or dentists. If you haven't tried Anison, then you may be surprised to see how incredibly fast it brings relief from neuralgic, neuritis, or headache pains. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Ask for Anison at any drugstore. Now for Mr. Keene and the case of murder and the star of death. Our scene opens in a large and fashionable home in a New York suburb. A dinner party has been in progress. But now the three guests have gathered in the library, where the host, Mark Adams, observes with some amusement that they're all looking forward to a surprise he's been hinting about. A surprise he is soon to reveal to his regret. Oh, yes, Mark. Yes, yes, What is this remarkable surprise you have for us? Yes, what's the big secret? You've got something up your sleeve, old man. (laughs) Oh, no doubt about it, I have, Paul. As a matter of fact, that's why I invited you all to dinner this evening. Then please don't keep us in suspense. I shan't eat this, my dear, but first, a prelude to my little exhibit... Loretta, you're a connoisseur of precious stones. Tell me, what's your favorite stone? Well, Mark, I suppose most women would prefer a diamond. But I'm partial to sapphires. Big ones. What are you getting at, Mark? Paul, you're as well known a collector of precious stones as I am. What would you say was the greatest sapphire in existence? The Star of Death, of course. Star of Death? What a dreadful name. (laughs) Would you like to see it? You mean you have the Star of Death. Here. Here. In this box, on this table. What? I sold over three quarters of my own collection of jewels to buy this sapphire from the Hancock Estate. But it was worth it. See for yourself. There. Oh, no. Really, it's magnificent. Oh, it's beautiful, (laughs) Mark. When I said I had a treat in store for you, I meant it. I... I... What? What happened to the light? What What could it have been? They they put the lights on, somebody. Well, wait, I'll I'll find the switch. Here it is. There. That's better. (laughs) Someone must have accidentally brushed against the wall switch and turned the lights off. Mark, the sapphire. It's gone. 
The star of death is gone. Very well, I can go along with the joke. Will the one who took the stone please replace it in the box on the table? Look here, a practical joke is one thing, but that sapphire is worth a fortune. Mark, Just I... a moment, Edith. Someone in this room is evidently a fool. Or a thief. But I'll give him or her a chance to save face. I'm going to put the lights out once again. And when I turn them back on, I'll expect to see that sapphire replaced inside this box. With no questions asked. Otherwise, I'm calling the police. You'll have just five seconds while I turn out the lights. Here goes. Remember. Five seconds. Ah! Ah! Mark! Let me at that light switch. Mark! He's on the floor. Don't touch him, Edith. He's dead. My father had been stabbed to death with a letter opener, Mr. King. Taken from the desk. He was murdered for that sapphire, the star of death. I read about the case this morning, Kay, in the newspapers. My partner, Mike Clancy, brought it to my attention. Sure, it was one of the strangest cases in years. All three suspects were arrested, boss. But the police don't know which one murdered Mr. Adams and stole that sapphire. Where were you at the time of the tragedy, Kay? Away for the weekend at a friend's house. Oh, Dad had only taken my advice. I begged him not to buy that sapphire. Why were you against his buying it, Kay? You've heard about the stone, I'm sure, Mr. King. Its history is horrible. That's how it got its name, the Star of Death. Three people died while it was in their possession, all violently. Father was the fourth victim. Tell me something about your father's guests. Who was present that night? There was Edith, Edith Sims. Father was very fond of her. I even think there was a possibility he might have married her. He'd been very lonely since Mother died two years ago. And the other guests? Paul Dudley. Is a jewel importer like Father was. They were close friends. And Mrs. Loretta Wainett is a well-known socialite, a widow. She's very rich, Mr. Keene, and she'd never have any reason to steal. And that was all? Yes, Mr. Keene. The servants had all left for the night. No one else was there but Father and his three kids. The jewel, apparently, was never found on any of them. No, Mr. Keene. All three persons swear they're innocent. And, well, it's hard for me to believe that any one of them could have done a thing like that. How's it strike you, Mike? Well, it's a puzzler, Mr. Keene. Sure, what happened to the sapphire? It couldn't have just disappeared. No, Mike, and yet I'm sure all three suspects were thoroughly searched by the police. Mr. Keene, couldn't it have been someone else? A thief who sneaked into the house? It's possible, Kay, but I doubt it. By the way, who described the details of the murder to the police? All three of Father's guests. And their stories were identical? In every detail. Will you help me, Mr. King? I have faith in the police, naturally, but this case is so mysterious. You're the most famous investigator in the country. And if you could work with the police... I'll try my best, Kay. And I'll also try to recover the stolen sapphire for which your father was murdered. Oh, thank you. I suggest you go home now and wait for my call. I'll want to look the house over. But before I do that, I think I've got an idea. What is it, boss? It's rather unusual, but if Lieutenant Hale of the Homicide Squad is willing to cooperate with me, maybe Mark Adams' killer will pay far more for that sapphire than he ever bargained for. But what you're suggesting, Mr. Keene, is dangerous. I know that, Lieutenant Hale. One of your three prisoners is a killer, but I doubt if you'll ever find out which one is guilty unless you release all three. But what good will that do? That sapphire, the star of death, hasn't been found yet, has it? No, Mr. Keene. Then it must be hidden somewhere. Well, obviously. Very well. Your police officers were with the three suspects from the time they left the Adams house, isn't that right? In other words, the sapphire is still inside the house. Exactly. But we've searched the place thoroughly, Mr. Keene. The murderer wouldn't have been foolish enough to stab Mark Adams to death if he or she didn't have an excellent hiding place for the sapphire. Then how will we get the stone? We'll let the killer find it for us and expose himself at the same time. Sounds like a good idea if it works. 
You can have the three suspects trailed by your plain men, but I prefer you wouldn't. Any slip-up would make the killer suspicious and spoil my plan. All right. I'll go along with you, Mr. Keene, on one condition. What's that, Lieutenant? I'm going to station a man at all the airports and railway terminals. I don't want my pigeon to fly the coop. I'm sure your pigeon will stay right here, Lieutenant, until he has his hands on that sapphire, the star of death. And when he reaches for it again, we'll have our hands on him. This is the library, Mr. Keene. The room where father was murdered. All right, Kay. We'll examine it thoroughly for any trace of the missing sapphire. Well, I'll go over it with a fine tooth comb, Mr. Keene. Good, Mike. I suppose that heavy desk has been gone through, Kay? At least a thousand times. The police looked under the carpets and opened up the upholstery and the chairs. There isn't a spot in this room that hasn't been searched. Isn't that the door, then? Yes. Excuse me, Mr. Keene. Mike. Yes, boss. Never mind the search. After what Kay has just told me, I'm sure we'll have to wait for some kind of a break. And we may be getting right one right now. How so? I've been expecting the murderer to make some excuse to return to this house for the stone. Let's see who's at the door. Mr. Keene, this is Paul Dudley. How do you do, Mr. Dudley? Mr. Keene, this is a great pleasure, sir. I'm very glad to know you. My partner, Mike Clancy. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. Mr. Keene, Lieutenant Hale at police headquarters told me you were responsible for my release. I thought you'd be here with Kay Adams, and I wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your confidence in me. That's quite all right. The murder was a shocking thing, and Mark Adams was my friend. But I trust the police now realize who the guilty woman is. Oh, you believe they have the killer? Naturally. That's the only reason they let me go, isn't it? And who do you think she is, Mr. Dudley? Why, Edith Sims, of course. Oh, no. Edith Sims? It's a horrible thing to say, I know, Kay, but I... I know more about Edith and your father than you do. Just what do you know, Mr. Dudley? I know Edith was poor, Mr. Keene, and she wanted to marry Mark. I also know he'd made up his mind not to marry again because of his daughter, Kay. I see. Sounds like more company, boss. Yes, you stay here with Mr. Dudley, Mike. I'll go to the door with Kay. This way, Mr. Keene. Is it true, Mr. Keene, that Edith Sims is being held by the police for father's murder? No, Kay. No one's being held at the moment. Kay, darling. Oh, Edith. Are you all right? I know how you must feel, dear. When your father died, everything I lived for went out of the world. This is Mr. Keene, Edith. Mr. Keene? He's investigating father's death. May I ask what brought you here, Miss Sims? I came to comfort Kay, Mr. Keene. And I want to stay a few days, darling, here with you. We can console each other, perhaps, just a little. Of course, Edith. That woman isn't here, is she? What woman, Miss Sims? Loretta Waynard. Oh, no. No, she is. Oh, thank goodness. Why are you so relieved, Miss Sims? Oh, did I sound relieved? I didn't mean... Please, Edith, tell Mr. Keene everything you know. He's here to help me. Well, I... I have no right to say this, Mr. Keene. But then I have no right to hold it back. I overheard Loretta Waynard quarrel with Mark Adams. On the night he was murdered? Yes. They were in the study just before dinner. Loretta told him she'd learned that he wanted to marry me. And she said he was out of his mind. They must have been closer friends than I thought. Loretta despised me, I know it. But I didn't care. It was what she said to Mark that hurt. And what was that? She said a man would be better off dead than married to a fortune hunter like me. Mark became angry and she apologized, Mr. Keene. Miss Sims, would you wait inside for me, please? Here's my partner, Mike Clancy. I want to have a word with him in private. Come with me, Edith. Very well. Oh, boss, we... uh, Sent preserve us another customer. Yes, Mike, and I believe this one will be the last. The third and last guest at the dinner party where Mark Adams was murdered and a fabulous sapphire stolen. I'll open the door. You are Mrs. Loretta Waynard? Yes. Is Kay Adams here... I came to pay my respects in her bereavement. Please come in. My name is Keene, Mrs. Wayland. Mr. Keene? The famous investigator? Well, this is a lucky coincidence. I'd heard you were investigating Mark Adams' murder, and I was coming to see you. Why? Because I know who murdered Mark. 
I realized it after I left police headquarters. I remember the remark at dinner the night Mark was murdered. Paul Dudley said it, Mr. Keene. And I remember his exact words. What were they, Mrs. Rayner? He said he'd give anything for possession of that sapphire, the star of death. And that it was a jewel any man would murder for. Did Paul Dudley know Mr. Adams had it in his possession at the time? Why, well, I couldn't say, Mr. Keene. But I'm telling you the truth. And Edith Sims is my witness. Very well. We'll give you a chance to prove it now. Miss Sims is inside, along with Mr. Dudley. Will you join them, Mrs. Wayman? Certainly. I'm quite willing to make that statement to Paul's face. Well, Mike? Yeah, sure, and we've got a fine jigsaw puzzle on our hands, boss. Each one accuses another, and their stories are all equally strong. The thing to do now is to find out who's lying, Mike, and put our hands on that fabulous sapphire. And when we do, the star of death can claim another victim when the killer gets the electric chair for murder. Just a moment, we'll return to Mr. Keene and the case of murder and the star of death. Meanwhile, here's a marvelous new scientific discovery that actually helps prevent cavities in your teeth. Yes, actually helps prevent cavities. It's Kalinos anti-decay tooth powder with ammonium iron. Greatest dental discovery since the invention of the toothbrush. Discovered by a great Midwestern university, this scientific ingredient reduces the lactobacilli bacteria in the mouth to help prevent harmful tooth decay. New Colonos is the first world-famous dentifrice to offer ammonium iron and retain its pleasant minty flavor and popular price. Neither this new Colonos powder nor any other ammonium iron dentifrice is a cure-all, but your dentist will tell you that in most cases, new Colonos, correctly used, reduces tooth decay, reduces the number of cavities. Think what that means to you and your children. Fewer fillings, less pain, less trouble. Above all, healthier teeth. And healthier teeth mean a cleaner mouth, more pleasing breath. Wonderful new Colonos is dentist recommended, dentist approved. So do as your dentist tells you. For brighter teeth, sweeter breath. Yes, and for fewer cavities, get new Colonos anti-decay tooth powder. Now back to Mr. Keene and the case of murder and the star of death. The murder of Mark Adams, a prominent jewel merchant brings Mr. Keene, the great investigator, and his partner, Mike Clancy, on the trail of one of the cleverest jewel thieves in the country. For Mark Adams was murdered for the Star of Death, a fabulous sapphire that Mr. Keene believes has been hidden inside the Adams' home by the killer. Now, the three people who were with the victim at the time of his death are in the house, along with Kay Adams, the victim's daughter. And as Mr. Keene and Mike gather them together in the room where Adams was murdered... We seem to have reached an impasse in the mystery of Mark Adams' death, ladies and gentlemen. All three of you are under suspicion of murder. Oh, well, 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 just well, a well. moment, please. Mr. Dudley. Well, Mr. Keene? You told me a few moments ago that, in your opinion, Edith Sims committed the crime. Paul, how could you say such a thing of me? You loved him, Edith, and he refused to marry you. That isn't true. Mr. Dudley is also among the accused. You, you mean someone says that I'm the murderer? Loretta Waynard. Why, I'll... Take it easy, Mr. Dudley. The boss wants me to keep this conversation on a friendly level, so to speak. And lastly, Mrs. Wayne joins the list of suspects. What? Who could have blamed me for it, Mr. Key? I did, Mrs. Wayne. Edith, you. I overheard what you said to Mark. You told him he'd be better off dead than married to me. You loved him too, and you were furious because he loved me. How dare you say that? How dare you? Oh, wait. She tripped over the rug, Mr. Keene. She struck her head against the floor. Well, she's unconscious. Would you carry her inside, Mr. Dudley? I'll call a doctor. No. I'll be all right. I, I don't need a doctor. She's coming around. Better see that she rests for a few minutes anyway. Here, let me help you, Mrs. Wainer. In spite of what you said about me, I'm not angry with you. Help her in here, Paul. All right, Kay. There's a studio couch in this room. Mike. I just noticed something. What was it, boss? Just before Mrs. Wayne had tripped, I saw Paul Dudley bending over the desk looking at something. Well, there's nothing on that desk but a blotter and a pen, Mr. King. Wait. Don't examine it now. I think someone's coming. Okay, Adam says there was some water out here, and I thought Mrs. Wayne had... Oh, here's the pitcher on the table. How's she feeling, Mr. Dudley? A little better. Oh, by the way, Mr. Keene, I'm remaining here in the Adams' home for the night. I live upstate, and the next train is very late. 
Kay Adams has offered me a room. I see. Uh, excuse me. Well, that's two of them, boss. Miss Sims made an excuse to stay here, and so is Paul Dudley. I'm also quite sure that Loretta Waynard will be too ill to go home this evening. That makes three suspects, all trying to stay here in the house where that sapphire is hidden. Come over to this desk again, Mike. I want to see what interested Mr. Dudley a moment ago. Well, it's a very fancy desk, sir. Look at the leather covering. It's kept in place by nail studs. And one of those studs seems to be loose. Yes, this is the one Paul Dudley was... Mr. Keene, when you touch that nail head, a secret panel opened in the side of the desk. Look. Yes. And look what it contains, Mike. Sense preservers. It's the sapphire, the star of death. The most magnificent jewel I've ever seen. We'll take possession of it for the time being, Mike, and close this secret panel again. Don't say a word about this to any of them. As far as they are concerned, the sapphire is still missing. Sure, and one of them is going to get a surprise, boss. That's what I'm counting on. That secret panel in the desk is an ingenious contraption. It must have been specially made for someone. Well, do you think Mark Adams had it made, Mr. Keene? No. If he'd known about that secret panel, he'd have looked there the moment the jewel was missing. Well, then who could have known? The desk's original owner. Mr. Adams probably bought it from someone else. Well, his daughter Kay had known, sir. Possibly, but... I don't want to ask her in front of the others, sir. I'll wait for an opportune time. Are we staying here for the night? Everyone else seems to be. We may as well join them. Well, what's the next move, Mr. Keene? We found the star of death, Mike, but we still have to find our killer. Frankly, I think I can almost do that now, but let's wait for overwhelming proof. And I wouldn't be surprised if we obtained that proof tonight. Not so loud, Kay. I hope I didn't waken you. No. No, I've been trying to read. Are the others asleep? Apparently, all but Mike Clancy and myself. He's in the library waiting for me. What is it you want, Mr. Keene? I didn't get a chance to talk to you alone, otherwise I'd have asked you this before. Where did the furniture in this house come from? Did your father buy it himself? No. It came with the house when we bought it. How long ago was that? Two years, Mr. Keene. And who sold it to you? Father never told me. I was in school in Switzerland at the time. Where's the deed to the house? That would give the person's name. Why, the deed must be in Father's safe. And where's that? In Father's study. Do you want the combination, Mr. King? If you know it, Kay. I do. Left one. Right six. Left four. Right nine. I just jot that down. All right, Kay. What are you going to do, Mr. King? I'm going to put my hands on your father's murderer. Mr. King? Yes, Mike. Put the lights on here in the study. Did you get what you were after, boss? I have it right here. The deed to the house with the seller's name on it. Everything seems to have worked out according to my suspicions, Mike, but... There's one more thing we have to do. What's that? It's going to throw a scare into a few innocent people, but it's the only way to get final proof. You go upstairs, Mike. Knock on every bedroom door and spread an alarm that the house is on fire. Boss, are you joking? Oh, Mike, I'm serious. Don't behave as if anyone's life is in danger at the moment. Just say the fire's in the cellar and they have plenty of time to leave. Then tell them that the fire has burned the telephone wires and that I've left to get the fire department. And where will you really be, Mr. Keene? I'll be in the library waiting for the killer to recover that sapphire, the star of death. Now, take it easy, folks. There's nothing to get alarmed about. Mr. Keene's calling out the fire department. All right, now. Come on, this way. I'll put the lights on, Mrs. Waynard, so you can see that secret panel a little better. <gasps> Mr. Keene! I was expecting you to drop by for the sapphire. Don't move, Mr. Keene. I see you've got a gun. You planned this. There isn't any fire. 
You tricked me, Keen. I began to suspect you this afternoon, Mrs. Wainard, when you tripped and fell at the psychological moment. While you were shouting at Edith Sims, you saw that Paul Dudley was interested in the desk. He noticed that loose nail head by accident, the one which opened the secret panel, and you distracted his attention and mine by falling suddenly and pretending to be hurt. So I did, Mr. Keene. Secondly, I found this deed. You were the one who sold this house and all the furniture in it to Mark Adams, so naturally you must be the one who knew about the secret panel in that desk. When you murdered Adams, you knew you would be searched for the sapphire you stole... So you hid it there. I sold Mark Adams this house because I lost my money, Mr. Keene. And I'm the kind of a woman who needs lots of it to live. He paid you quite a sum for this house, according to the deed. One hundred and fifty thousand dollars. But I'm used to having millions, Mr. Keene. You must be quite a gambler to get rid of it so fast. (laughs) Yes, I love to gamble on anything. A roulette wheel, a race horse, and the turn of a card. I also like to live the way a woman of breeding is accustomed to live. That's why I wanted that sapphire. No woman of breeding I ever knew was a cold-blooded murderer, Mrs. Wainwright. The star of death isn't inside that secret panel, Mr. Keene. I know it isn't. Which means you have it. Perhaps. Turn it over to me. I'm not playing games now, Keene. You'll either turn that sapphire over to me or you'll get a bullet in your head. How would you get rid of the sapphire? A stone that size? Stop stalling for time. I want that sapphire now. Do you? I'll count to three. If you don't place it on top of that desk, I'll kill you. One, two... Ah! Drop the gun. Ah! Drop it fast before I... You put a bullet in my wrist. Lucky you didn't get one in your heart. For a moment, Mike, I thought you wouldn't return in time. I wouldn't have missed you if I'd had the chance. I know that. Mike? Yes, boss? Put in a call to Lieutenant Hale at police headquarters. Okay, Mr. Keene. Tell him we've managed to repay his patience and cooperation by solving this case. Say we found the star of death and the woman who murdered for it. And he can have them both at his convenience. And so Mr. Keene finds the solution to the case of murder and the star of death. The next time you're suffering from the pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, try Anison. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve these pains. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way have discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So next time such pain strike, take Anison. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30, and economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100. The name is Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, is based on the novel Mr. Keene. The radio sequel is originated and produced by Frank and Ann Hummert. Dialogue by Lawrence Klee. It is on the air every Thursday at this time. We thank William Podmore, who appeared tonight as Mr. Keene for Bennett Kilpack, who's taking a short vacation on doctor's order. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Thursday when the kindly old Tracer turns to the African blowgun murder case. This is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site where we put out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old-Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. 
I don't think this replacement, Mr. King, quite uh, manages to do as well as Bennett Kilpack did in the previous episodes. Certainly his delivery is meant seeing a lot of the empathy that uh, you got with uh, Bennett Kilpack as uh, Mr. Keen. Though, according to Jim Cox's book on the series, that had pretty much been uh, taken away as the series moved from a focus on lost persons to a focus on hunting down murderers and sending them to the chair. Of course, the series would continue to be known as Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons, even though that was no longer the uh, focus. I guess it's a, just a question of uh, branding. Even in the uh, post-war era, the series had been established as Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons, and the theme that people associated with the show was Somewhere I'll Find You. It really didn't matter then that... Uh, Mr. Keene wasn't looking so much for missing persons anymore. It's just that Mr. Keene, Avenging Angel, just didn't have the same ring to it. All right, well, that's it for now. Join us back here tomorrow for Manhunt. And then uh, a week from Tuesday, we'll be returning to the era of Nick Carter. Next Monday, we'll be back with another episode of Mr. Keen's Tracer of Lost Persons. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. Become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.